Are you expecting a baby or have a newborn and wondering what you can expect from the sleep in these early weeks? Well, don't worry, I have got you covered in this episode. I'm gonna share with you exactly what newborn sleep looks like, what you can expect and how you can best shape things for a future good sleeper. So stick around because we are gonna cover this in five simple steps. Okay. So the first tip I wanna share with you is a little golden nugget that we were given by mother nature. And that is those first 48 hours after your baby is born. They tend to sleep a lot. It's just something that I think mother nature did for us. The baby's probably tired from their venture into the world. And of course, a mother is going to be tired after what we go through to bring them into the world. And so those first 48 hours are your chance to rest and recover. So if you're having your first baby and it's so exciting, I would just hold off on the family visitors and just say, just give me a couple of days and then you can come and see the new baby because you really need to recover. And people can tell you this as much as they like and you might be like, yeah, 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 especially when it's your first, but you will understand what I mean once you've had that first baby. So take the advice and block that time out for yourself for that recovery. You're going to be in a much better state to be an amazing mummy to that newborn who is going to be demanding on you in those early weeks. And you need to have your strength to do that. Okay, so what sort of sleep can we expect from a newborn baby? Well, newborns are typically unable to be awake for more than about 45 minutes to an hour at a time and not be in a mess. <laughs> so if your baby is awake for longer than that, they're probably going to start to get fractious and they'll be fussing, perhaps crying. And sometimes, especially as a new parent, we might not know why. And we often have that go-to solution, which is, oh, the baby's crying, it must be hungry. But sometimes they'll just be tired. It is natural to respond to a crying baby with things like rocking them and feeding them and pacing the room with them. But sometimes you can do all these things and they're still crying and they're still fussing. And it's just that they want to be asleep. They don't know how to put themselves to sleep. They have no idea how to get into that place. So they rely on us to pretty much do it for them in these early weeks. But knowing that 45 minutes to an hour is about the maximum wait time that they can handle can really help you to watch the clock a little bit and go, okay, it's about time now. And if your little one isn't fussing and seems quite happy, still get them down for that nap because when they do start crying and fussing is possibly too late. And if they've gone past tired and into an overtired state, they may be wired and it's much harder to settle an overtired baby than it is to settle a content but tired baby. Okay, so the next tip for you is to consider the daytime and nighttime environments because by helping to demonstrate those, you can set triggers and cues up for your baby and really help them to get their circadian rhythm, which is their body clock, into a really good pattern and recognizing night and day. So simple things like dark and light when it's nighttime, make sure the room is nice and dark. And when it's daytime and time to be awake, make sure they're in a light environment. Different seasons are gonna require you to work harder at this. You'll need to block out all the daylight creeping in during the summer months, and you'll need to turn on lights and help with the signal that it's morning in the winter months when it's still dark in the morning. It's not just the light in the room that sends the day and night signals to your baby. It's also you as a parent. Your parent mode, as I like to call it, can have a daytime and nighttime mode as well. So when it's daytime, you're engaged, you're animated, your eyes are engaging, your face is expressive, and you've got a full voice that comes out. You're talking to them, you're interacting with them. And that's very much a daytime mode. When it's nighttime, we want to take you into nighttime mode. And this is where you're very bland and boring. The voice goes and it's nothing more than a whisper or a shh sound. So the voice goes. There's no engaging eye contact or animated facial expressions. It's all just very bland and boring. Not cold or standoffish at all, just 
bland and boring. And by being in that sort of bland and boring and unengaging state, it helps your little one to calm and settle. They're not expecting more from you. And again, it's a trigger, it's a cue. Ah, this is how we are in the day and this is how we are when it's sleep time. So it will really help them. The next thing to know is that babies, especially newborns, are likely to be able to sleep pretty much anywhere, which is great. So yes, they can sleep on the go. If they're falling asleep after every hour of awake time, then they're going to need to be pretty flexible and they will not off on the go. Now, on the go is one thing, but loud, crazy, hectic environments are another thing. Sure, your baby will potentially sleep in a loud environment, but that doesn't mean they're getting the best quality of sleep. And I remember with one of mine, when she was very tiny, possibly just a few weeks old, we went to a carnival and she was asleep in the pram and we were walking along with our toddler as well. There was the band and there was all sorts going on and it was noisy and hectic. She was asleep, which on the outside would seem fine, right? You think, that's okay. She's having a sleep. <laughs> the truth is, when little ones are asleep, but in that kind of environment, a part of them is aware of that. They're not getting the same deep quality sleep that they would get in a more restful environment or a calmer environment. And typically it's the calmer daytime environment that leads to a better night's sleep as well. So if you find your little one is very wakeful in the night or fussing a lot in the night, it could be because even though they may be sleeping in the day, it may be in a rather hectic environment. So they're not getting the quality of sleep that they really, really need. Now I have one more newborn sleep tip for you, but before I share it with you, I have to ask you this. Could you please like this episode? and subscribe to the podcast or YouTube channel, depending on where it is that you're enjoying this. I'd really appreciate that because you doing that helps us to reach more parents like you who need to hear these tips. Okay, thanks so much. Now, for the last newborn sleep tip I'm going to share with you, and this is a great one. So, very early on, like from around two to three weeks old, try to get into a rhythm of feeding upon waking. So when your baby wakes for the day, they have their milk and then they play, maybe have a little activity time. And after their wake time, they go to settle to sleep. And then when they wake up again, they feed upon waking. And the beauty of this feed upon waking is that it has so many benefits. First of all, you don't start a routine or habit of feeding your baby to sleep. So if they've been awake for a while, then you feed them and they nod off. That could be because you left it too late for them to go back to sleep. You could become reliant on that. You, so you could become reliant on using milk as a means to get to sleep, which can in turn lead to overfeeding. It can also lead to digestive discomfort because they're filling up with milk and then laying down and it's not very comfortable for the digestive system. And all sorts of other problems can accumulate if feeding to sleep or right ahead of sleep becomes everyday practice. So of course, feed your hungry baby whenever they're hungry. If they're hungry, feed your baby. But if you can try to get that feeding to take place in a rhythm of wake up, feed, play, sleep, wake up, feed, play, sleep, in that kind of rhythm, you'll definitely help your baby to develop really lovely, healthy feeding and sleeping rhythms. It might not go perfectly every time, but it's definitely a good practice to adopt if you can. And simply being aware of this right now will make you more vigilant and more mindful of it. And so a little story for you about my first when the sleep deprivation was horrendous when he was first born. And just to share with you how I wished I could have had that first 48 hours of recovery. It was a rather exhausting birth and he was in neonatal and I was unfortunately disturbed in the middle of the night when I was trying to get the rest and I was moved from a private room to a ward, which was actually completely unnecessary. That room was still completely empty in the morning. It wasn't like it was needed for anybody else. And I should have just been left alone to rest and recover, but I wasn't. And not only did that cause an emotional upset for me at the time, it kind of had a spiral effect that pretty much led to six months of some degree of a postnatal traumatic stress. It was a, a trauma that spiraled from there. 
And because I couldn't get that sleep, the sleep deprivation built up during that first week of my baby's life while we were in the hospital. I was in the worst mental place that I have ever known because of sleep deprivation. And I remember what it felt like. I remember describing it to my husband as feeling worse than how I'd felt when my dad died. That's how much sleep deprivation messes with your head. And I would never want to be in that place again. I wouldn't wish it upon anybody, which is why I do what I do. It was an awful, awful state to be in. So I urge anybody having a baby to try to ring fence that first 48 hours to recover for yourself. It's so, so worthwhile. <laughs> okay, so let's recap on those tips. We've got the first 48 hours, rest, recover, and get that sleep that your little one is hopefully going to let you get. When your baby is awake, they shouldn't really be awake for more than 45 minutes to an hour before it's time for them to go back to sleep again. Don't wait for them to tell you they're tired. They don't do that. Or if they do, it's when it's too late. The only time they tell you that they're tired is when they're overtired. So catch them at the opportune window after 45 minutes to an hour and get them off for a sleep. Get the environment set up and your parent mode practiced so that you can help your little one to distinguish day and night and try to have them sleeping in restful or somewhat calm environments rather than really, really hectic environments in the day, or at least if not all of the time, most of the time. And that rhythm of feeding upon waking, that one's going to serve you really, really well in the long run. So I hope these newborn sleep expectations are going to really help you get off to an absolutely amazing start with your new baby. Right now, the best thing you can do is jump into our Sweet Dreams video series. It's a completely free series. If you just click the button below, you can get instant access and it's gonna really give you more in-depth knowledge and tools that you can use to guide your baby to be an amazing little sleeper. Until next time, sweet dreams, and I'll see you soon.